the the first word that I, that comes to mind is gullible 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 man oh man oh me oh my yeah so this always gets me always this it always gets me it's like i can't believe it lord like it's not that i don't believe it but it's just like oh man you're so right you're so right because he says in the in the in the word that many will be deceived we're going to be going to a scripture where we see this scripture from the title many are being deceived and uh it says for wide is the gate that leads to destruction and I, I feel bad i feel bad and we can only pray for these people and try to knock some sense into them by sharing the scriptures with them that's how we knock sense into the gullible because you know we're going to be going into a couple of videos where you see fake healing uh fake speaking in gibberish tongues um what else uh prosperity gospel preaching the whole joel Osteen environment stuff like that it, it makes me sad it breaks my heart but the lord said that the lord said you know that uh in the in the end days there will be false prophets right false po prophets will rise let's go to matthew chapter 7 verse 13. so right here 7 13 it says enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction what kind of destruction are we talking about perishing the, your soul your soul will perish and, and and i don't say that lightly i do not say that lightly i hate saying that that if you don't put your trust in jesus alone not on a certain miracle or a pastor evangelist if you are not saved if you are not sure of your salvation that's a red flag that's a red flag and that's one thing that we're that i see the gullible chasing after is healing prosperity he and healing those two areas prosperity and healing wow not knowing that the lord jesus christ didn't heal everybody you know not not everybody there was some that he said no it, it ain't the time he didn't heal lazarus he didn't heal his his friend lazarus why? Because he was going to show his glory through what happens to Lazarus. Let's go to this video over here because I want you guys to see it for your own eyes. I want to know what you think. And if you're watching this as a pre-recording, let me know what you think in the comment section. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and join me continually I, I post videos all the time i post a lot of videos i try to post around two videos a day a 45 minute live bible study video and a reaction video exposing uh, debunking videos and stuff like that just to protect the flock yeah so let's go to this video over here um There's this guy named David Biga Hernandez. David 
Ortega Hernandez. Let me know in the comment section if you're aware of this evangelist. He has a lot of subscribers. Just because somebody has a lot of subscribers doesn't make them men or women of God saved, sealed, healed by the Holy Spirit. They can be deceivers. They can be wolves in sheep's clothing. There can be a wolf hiding behind all these subscribers. Oh, that, that number right there. People see that number. They're like, oh, he must be legit. Jesus says, not just anybody that says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God. Wow. All right. So. On this one right here, I guess he went to California where he started doing healing. So this is his bread and butter right here. This is his bread and butter where he shows a supposed power of the Lord Jesus through him. And one thing that you will continually notice with these guys, girls, is that they get a lot of attention. A lot of people idolize them, starts they start to idolize this person as a famous, popular person, right? So let's let's check out this first one right here. Service. He was coughing and he hardly could breathe. Are you Lord God? Look, so all these people right here. The past few days. All those people are going. Airways. He said, even during service, he was coughing and he hardly could breathe. He said, but as he was worshiping, he said, so the Holy Spirit came upon him and now he can breathe clearer. Hallelujah. So what was wrong with your breathing? Like the AC would affect my coughing a lot. And even when you said turn up the AC, I was like, no, don't do that. <laughs> well, now we can turn it up because the Lord healed you. But but you, you, you weren't able to breathe in like this? Before, without... So the thing with this, one thing that I catch right away is, where's the gospel? Like, because these, these people, they, they claim to be healed. A lot of times we have adrenaline that rush to, rushes through the body. We have endorphins. We have dopamine. If you are new here to my channel, my expertise is in the fitness industry. I'm a certified personal trainer and I actually own a gym and boot camp business where I'm the lead fitness instructor there. I run boot camps, personal training, online coaching, and we have open gym for weight loss, muscle building, and overall better health and performance. So I know a little, uh, a thing or two when it comes down to health, right? Strength, power, or overall heart health uh, conditioning. So when it comes down to something like this, uh, uh, an environment like this brings a lot of emotions. They bring a lot of emotions so therefore emotions picks up your adrenaline adrenaline picks up your intensity intensity picks up endorphin dopamine it's like a feel-good sensation that feel-good sensation can sometimes be used to cover up any type of suppose like this guy he, he probably has some kind of cough or something like that recently and through that emotion you can feel better right it covers it it covers it it can and uh they're they're saying that they it it was a a miraculous healing which is false even if it's true here's the thing all right i'm a born again believer the holy spirit is mighty in me to where conviction comes into my heart uh once i start uh behaving in the flesh all right so don't get me wrong. I do believe that the Lord Jesus can heal physically. He, he can still heal somebody miraculously, physically. Does it do it often? No. For what? He wants to heal your soul. Because what good is it that he heals your body, but you're not saved? What good is it that you get healing, but you will not inherit the kingdom of God? In order to inherit the kingdom of God, in order to go to heaven, you must be born again. Are you born again? How can you be born again? By grace through faith, believing the gospel from your heart. What is the gospel? The gospel is the Lord Jesus Christ dying on the cross, being buried, and then resurrecting the third day. 
for the remission of your sins. Repentance is within that as well for yourself. You need to repent, humble yourself, and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Not depend on preachers, teachers, evangelists, or pastors for anything else. That's it. It is the Lord Jesus Christ, not, it, not, not anybody else. Do not... Do not depend on pastors, teachers, evangelists, pastors. Like, don't. But because they will fail you. We're all still in the flesh. We're all still human. Even, even what's his name, David? Even David, he has secret sins. He's dealing with the secret sins. Just like Paul in, in uh, Romans chapter 7 We will always war against the flesh, right, against our own flesh. I know there's a scripture where it says we do not war against flesh and, and uh, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against unclean spirits, right? But we do go against our own flesh, though. We do deal with our own flesh. When we, the scripture is saying that when somebody comes and offends you in regards to your faith, It's an unclean spirit working through them. So don't hate the person. Hate the unclean spirit that's in them. And now you can. Lift your hands. There it goes. There it goes. So where's the gospel? What happened? Is he saved? Is this young guy saved? What is he doing? Why is he falling like that? What, what happened? Does he have no self-control? One of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Brother David, nine months ago, she was stabbed in the heart. She was stabbed in the heart nine months ago, and it caused great pain and discomfort with her breathing. Tonight, the power of God came on her. She feels no stress on her heart area, and she's breathing better now. been praying for your family he everybody prays for their family right especially if you are in a religion or you believe in God if you believe in God you believe in prayer right even the Hindus pray right everybody prays at some point somebody you prayed so that's too broad right And even though God healed you tonight So that the healing already happened, right? Supposedly. She got stabbed in the heart. She survived. First of all, that's a that's mercy from God that she was able to live another day because maybe she still needs to repent and believe from the heart the gospel. Being born again. Are you born again, right? Are you born again? Where, where is it? I think it's in uh, John 4.4, right? John. Oh. John 4.4. Right here in John 4.4, it says, need to go through this. No, what is it? 3.3? Forgive me for that. Yeah, 3.3. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, He cannot see the kingdom of God. See, and, and, and the Lord is not just talking about physically seeing it. No, he's talking about entering as well. He's talking about entering. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Right? So where are these people born again? Make sure. Be sure of your salvation. Like, that's one thing about these preachers that are doing these healings. Like, hold up. Hold up first. Be sure of your salvation, right? It's not only about healing, but not only that, but like I said, are they really being healed? And the reason why they do this is for clout, for attention. More eyeballs equals more money, donations, so on and so on. There's a cry in your heart for your family. Lord, violently the enemy has taken them. And the thing with David, he's a 
he's a good speaker. Right, he's a good speaker, but the Lord says that you don't you don't need to be a good speaker. Look at me. <laughs> Look at me. I'm I I I'm not a good speaker. I I do my best. Not with fancy words, right? If you if we go to 1 Corinthians Let's see. 1 Corinthians Let me take you there. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna take you on a small little journey here, okay? Right here, boom. First Corinthians two fifteen. Let's go there. So first Corinthians two one through five, I mean. One through five. It says, and I, brethren, this is Paul writing to the Corinthians. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's it. Is David doing this? Is David determined not to know anything among those people except Jesus Christ and him crucified? That's it. Because that's the gospel. One, one must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. Right? I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom. You don't need no fancy speech. You don't need to be a, a, a professional speaker. You don't need fancy words. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. The power to what? The power to what? To come from, from death to life. When you are born again, you come from death to life. Because your soul was dead in trespasses. Once you are born again, you receive the Holy Spirit by grace through faith. You have repented and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He forgives you all your sins. You are born again. That is the power. But in demonstration of the spirit and of the power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. What's the power of God? To be able to withstand in the evil day. The power, the power of the Holy Spirit in you gives you discernment. Gives you knowledge, wisdom, so that you may not fall into temptation, so that you may not sin. That's the power, the power to not sin. The power to do God's will, the power to understand his word, the power to share the gospel, the power to prophesy. That's the power. That is the power. We ask you, Jesus, to violently take them back. I come against all strongholds. We're probably not going to get through this whole video. <laughs> wow, this is it's horrible because this girl, I pray for this girl that she believes from the heart the gospel. Everything else will be bonus. Because the, the Lord can, can uh, fix her family. He can restore anything that sin cost in their family. He can. The Lord Jesus Christ can restore you. But what's more, the most important thing here is being born again. Having your sins forgiven. Because what good is it 
that he restores your family, but you are not born again. You have, you have not believed in the gospel. The thing with all these people right here is that it reminds me of Jude. Right? Or Second Timothy. Jude is a good one too that we can go to. But we're going to go to Second Timothy. Right here. Uh, man, we're, we're, we're all over the place. The reason why is because I want to make sure I confirm all this with scripture. I'm showing you scripture, right? Showing you scripture after scripture. Because other people, all they want is to hear what they want to hear. And that is just pure goodness, healing, prosperity, restoration of their families. That's all they want. Nothing else. But what should be more important? Forgiveness of your sins. What good is it that God does all that, but you have not believed in the gospel? You have not been born again. You have not received the Holy Spirit, and you're depending on preachers. That's, that's a red flag right there. Never depend on the preacher, teacher, evangelist, pastor. Only on the Lord Jesus Christ and in His Word. Right here in Second Timothy, Second uh, Timothy four three two four says, "For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers." These people here heaped up David. David Dega Hernandez. They that's who they want. They want somebody that tells them these things. That you're gonna be healed, that you're gonna be restored, that you're gonna be having money in your bank account. But what about repentance? What about your repentance? Why why are you still practicing sin? Why are you depending on a pastor? Why is that your ambition? Selfish ambition. When Paul asked the Lord to heal him, the Lord said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. Why isn't grace sufficient for them? Oh, but Manny, they're in pain. Yes, we all we all go through tribulation, but be a good cheer. The Lord Jesus Christ has overcame the world for you. You will overcome. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Fables. A lot of these preachers, they have their own little story. The definition to fables is fable is literally, literally. Genre defined as a um, succinct fictional story in prose or verse that features animals, legendary creatures, plants, animals. Um, fables definition. A short story typically with animals as characters conveying a moral. Tell fictitious tales. Something fictitious. Fable. Fictitious. The definition to that is something fiction, right? Fiction, fictitious, 
fables not real or true, being imaginary or having been fabricated. These, these people, they have these fables that catch people's attention. And now you're like, wow, wow, that's amazing. Of course, I want to donate. So let's go back to the video. I come against, man, I, I, I see it. I feel as I'm touching you, there's like a... Some this guy's good. This guy, he's a professional. I think he's been doing it for many, many years. Mm -hmm. You know why? He, did, he, did, he didn't know who he was going to go against. So he switched his intention. Let's back up a little bit. Look at what I mean. Look at, he was about to say something. Man, I, I, I see all oh, them back. I come against all strongholds. I come against, man, I, I, I. I come against all strongholds. And I come against, he didn't know what. Because he doesn't know the girl. So that will that will diminish his donation. I see it. I feel as I'm touching you. There's like a so much stress and yeah, of course. Look at her. She's already crying. Her demeanor says it all. Her her, her features, her countenance says it all. You don't think she's stressed? Oh yeah, she's stressed. She's angry. She's um, anxious. She has fear. Anxiety. There's yelling and screaming and arguing. But today, the power of God's going through you. And he's setting your family free. And you're going to be a conduit to set your family free. Lift your hands. Now, what was wrong with your heart? You got stabbed in the heart. I got stabbed in my heart. I died three times. And... Um... I got healed, but now I have high blood pressure and anxiety, and it's just my mind, so I'm terrified. And so now you're completely whole. Go back to the doctor. All right. So she's completely whole. Where's the gospel? Where's repentance? What, is, what does the Bible say about repentance? Jesus came preaching repentance, right? Or, or no, or, or am I wrong? Right there in Matthew. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew 4. So after Jesus was tempted in the wilderness for 40 days, 40 nights, he started his ministry. Jesus begins his Galilean ministry. Now when Jesus heard that John had, had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee. And le leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelled in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the regions of Zebulun and Sephtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Zephtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have been have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region in shadow of death, light was dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent. 
for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Repent. So, where's repentance? Why, why is this guy over here putting up a show? Putting a show. That's what he's doing. Putting up a show. Messing with their emotions. What good is it that they get healed but end, end up losing their own soul? Doctor, have them check you and see what the Lord Jesus has done for you. Can we give the Lord a hand? That's a powerful miracle. Okay, my friend. Evangelist Joshua Kelly. Hey, David. This guy, this, his name is Danny. His name is Danny. And he had, it's Zalyitis. And it would stop the blood from flowing. And now there's no numbness That's in his the body. Power of God going through you, sir. It's all over you. Receive it. It's flowing through you now. That's the blood of Jesus. What do you feel on you right now? I feel the Holy Spirit. What does it feel like? It feels... You see him pushing him? <laughs> he pushed him with his knuckles. Let's back up right there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Feels... Feels what? He doesn't know what to say. He doesn't know what to say. It's all emotion. I can't believe. Look at the people sitting back there. Nobody is realizing for why it is the gate that leads to destruction so many i think that answers that Man. brother david this young lady is 13 years old and she broke her right foot and it they put a cast on and the cast didn't work Adrenaline, endorphin, dopamine, emotions, all that is coming into play here. You know, so many are being deceived. Because so what happens here is that they get they're blinded from the gospel. They're more intrigued with healing, prosperity, restoration. They're more intrigued with that. So what happens is they continue in their life seeking that, continually seeking that. But the Lord says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Right? Wow. So these, these preachers, they put up a show. They sell stuff. They get eyeballs. They get donations. They make a lot of money. They get so deep into the love of money that they don't even notice that they're being used by Satan. Them alone are being deceived. Because there's no gospel. The enemy is fine with you preaching healing, prosperity, and restoration. Healing. Prosperity, restoration. That's what we're always looking forward to. As long as the enemy keeps you there and away from the gospel that saves your soul, he's fine with that. He's fine with that. Once you are born again, and you try to do this, you, you, your, your ambition is just towards healing. Your ambition is just towards prosperity and restoration. The Holy Spirit will convict you. Because you're making it an idol now. 
right? Idolatry. You're obsessed with getting healed. You're obsessed with gaining prosperity, getting restoration. But the Lord Jesus says, in this world you will have tribulation. Maybe that's the tribulation he's talking about. But be a good cheer. He has overcome the world. Even if you're going through uh, some kind of sickness that, uh, that you're not getting healed from, be of good cheer. The Lord has overcome the world for you. If you're, you haven't prospered financially or anything like that, see, here's the thing. When you are born again, that is prosperity right there. When you are born again, you, you have now the Holy Spirit. You're, you're prospering in the fruit of the Spirit, love. You're, you're prospering in love and joy and peace and patience, faithfulness, goodness, kindness, gentleness, self-control. That's your prosperity. You prosper in the kingdom of God. You prosper in His Word, understanding His Word. You prosper in growth of faith, discernment. That's where your prosperity should be coming from. And then restoration. The Lord restores you to Him. Because we were first, we were lost. But we are now found. Once you have believed the gospel. Amen. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Other than that, subscribe if you're new. Hit the like button before you leave. And I hope I see you in the comment section. Take care. Be safe. God bless you. Bye-bye.